barbershop conversation, guys. Feel free to hit the subscribe button. So uh, it's May 19th, y'all. Michael X birthday. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I celebrate with the family every year. You know, we do a lot of cultural stuff on uh, May 19th. We went to, uh, if you guys live in L.A., or I believe this is going to be a traveling museum, Soul of a Nation. We saw it at the Broad Museum today. And, um, you know, um, did some other stuff, too. But <laughs> you, you know what I, I learned today? The Charlo twins were born May 19th as well. For those of you who don't know, Kevin Garnett is born on May 19th too, you know. Uh, but I, I, I found that rather interesting. And, you know, it, it, it gave me a reason to, to do this video. And truth be told, I want to do this video um, when I went to the press conference. And um, I read a lot into little things, guys. This may not mean nothing to y'all, but to me, just as a person who understands boxing for what it is, you know, you have to stay in shape. You got to stay ready so you don't have to get ready, etc. And the, the, your fitness levels, for me, plays a lot into your determination and how you really, really appreciate boxing. Now, at the press conference, it slipped my mind. I, I didn't think about it to today when I, when I realized that their birthday was the same days as Malcolm X. When Jamel Charlo, he was doing an interview. And uh, six weeks out, seven weeks out, the man was basically 10 days away from being on wait for the fight because uh, I said something, something to the effect of, you look like you're in great shape. And he lift up his shirt and he was basically ripped, like way in ripped. It, it, it looked for real. And I'm not BS, I'm not using hyperbole. I'm not doing nothing. I'm, I'm being as factual as I can. And... Um, it, uh, and, and, and then to heighten that, to realize that today that they were born the same day as Malcolm X, I was thinking how much they have matured. Uh, and I was going to do this video too, because every time I see Jamal Charlo, I always see him with his family. And last night I interviewed Jamal Charlo. Guess who's standing there sitting right next to him? His wife, you know? And, uh, and, uh, Jamel, I, I, y'all don't see it a, a lot because it, you only see him fight week when he's turned up. I don't see him often. He lives in Texas. He has a house here in LA, but I rarely see him. But, but because his brothers and Earl, they all have camps. I get to see him when he's not training and I literally can see their maturity you know like uh they wild childs man not, and not wild childs in terms of like uh uh like they're crazy or nothing like that or they go over the top but they're very outspoken free-spirited in terms of their energy they're not afraid to exert energy wherever they want to exert energy and when jamel didn't respond because he understood the business of boxing. I mean, Tony Harrison, in my hood, he put up an A-plus performance, right? And every, I, you enjoyed it, I enjoyed it. Uh, um, and, uh, but the fact that he understood the play that was going in, he understood no matter how he felt, Tony Harrison definitely heightened the fight. You know, and, and and two, it doesn't matter what happens on that DS. It what really matters is June twenty third, right? June twenty third. And uh uh I wish the Charles well, man. I you guys know I I uh I did a video with New York and I got some DMs and stuff like that, right? When uh I was like, Man, I would love just to follow them around. They're interesting to me. Like They've been interesting to, to me the last three years. I don't know why. I don't know how. But, you know, I was very high strung as a kid. You know, I would snap on everything. You know, I didn't know any better. You know, maybe that's the symmetry we have. Um, but uh, I think they're interesting. You know, I think that they have compelling personalities. Um, and they were born on Michael Mech's birthday. 
you know, and I, I just wanted to do a video on that because I thought maybe you guys may not know. And there's a piece of me that believes in energy. Like, you know, maybe I'm weird. I don't know. I know some of you guys may not believe in that, but I think there's levels of energy on days you were born, on days other people were born, you know, and, and, and some of that is because we pay attention to that. You know, Kevin Garnett was born May 19th, who was the most high intensity guy ever to play in the NBA in that era. That era of NBA, no one as intense as Kevin Garnett. You know, everyone falls second to the level of, of uh, boisterous intensity that Kevin Garnett exude on the basketball court. And then you have the Charlo brothers, you know. And, um, um, you know, I just, I wish the Charlos well. And um, not from a fan, but just as a man perspective. Do I think they're great for boxing? Yes. But I also believe that they put in the work. You know, I, uh, I, I looked at Jamal Charlo. I always, I, I always, the first thing I do when I see fighters I don't shake their hands. They, uh, I give them knuckles and a lot of shit like that. But uh, um, the first thing I notice is like what they look like physically. Jamal is rounding in the shape. He looks good, man. He looks he looks strong. I I, I see the bone structure in his face come into form. You know, uh, 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 because w when he's not in camp, he he literally looks like Cam Chancellor to me. He looks like a big ass free safety. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he literally. I think him and Sean Porter, those type of guys, and uh, maybe a Deontay Wilder, Javon Curse, freak, those guys are like freak of nature athletically, right? I think that they could actually try out for an NFL team. I don't think, I don't know if they can make it. But, excuse me, I think that they have a level of athleticism and attached to their physicality that will allow them to do well as it relates to the NFL. <laughs> And, um, but I want to say this about Jamel Charlo, like it, love it, or hate it. The fact that he wants to get right back in the ring with Tony Harrison is a testament to the, to his character. People are going to judge him on the win or loss, right? But listen, do you get, and I, 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 I thought of this today, if a man stands up for his family to another man and gets beat up do you laugh at the man because he got beat up no you celebrate the you celebrate him not wavering and uh not changing his character in the moment of distress right there's a lot of men that can beat me up out there but if you touch my family i'm gonna fight you period end of discussion i'm gonna snap you could possibly beat me up. But the fact that my character didn't change in the moment of distress should be celebrated. Right? And and this is the most distress I've ever seen. <coughs> Jamel Charlo, this is the most, for obvious reasons, right? He lost his belt, right? And um, the fact that he is, if you would have me guess his weight, I would say he's 167. I would say he's 167 uh, when I saw him at the press conference. He looked good, looked lean. And, and you guys probably can see that in the video. He has to make 154. Tony Harrison looked like he's just starting camp. Um, you know, uh, he probably looked about 175-ish. But his muscles wasn't as, his muscle definition wasn't there yet. Um, so win or lose people, are, boxing fans have every right to judge him whether he wins or loses, right? But the fact that he's stepping right back in the ring tells me that there's a level of, of, uh, honor. Th there's a level of honor for a man just to step back in the ring and, and, and go get his belt back. There's a lot of people that, uh, won't go get what was taken from them. We see it in sports all the time, you know. And, um, you know, we saw Daniel Jacobs three weeks ago. The belt was his. Those three belts were his. All he had to do was literally go get it. He didn't. 
So, you know, um, and Jamal, um, I think that uh, the business around his division is keeping him from being as great as he possibly can be. But uh, I think that um, over time, he will get his credit. I don't know when. They're young, what, 19, 1990? So they're 29. They got like four more years in their real prime years. They don't take a lot of punishment, you know. Um, but uh, I'm excited to see that 154-pound division. It's the only division of merit, you know, where every fighter has won a loss. And they're all A-level fighters. I love it. I love it. I love it. And th that means that there is no... Um, 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 there's no fear. There's no fear at that division. I'm going. I'm going after you. I'm going after you. I'm going after you. What I gotta do to get my belt? And that 154 pound division between those four or five, six guys. There's about there's six guys there that can fight. Castano and Laura included. You know, Erickson Lubin is on the outside looking in just yet. He has the talent, but we gotta make sure that he's he's mentally ready there. I like Lubin, um, but I think that 154 pound division. I'll add I'll add Ruben in there. I, I think he's right about ready, you know, especially after this next fight. I think he'll be able to contend. He, he has to, basically, you know. Um, or if he's smart, he fights the loser of those four guys. He, he picks the loser, and they fight, you know, or maybe he'll fight Castano. You know, I, I don't know. He, he'll have options, you know. But uh, those seven guys, we got some... We got some really good main event fights that could possibly happen, you know. Um, but yeah, man, it it it, it just. Uh, um, I was impressed at the fact that they were born on Malcolm X's birthday, and May nineteenth means the world to me, you know. Um, and, and and what I wanted to say is, if you have people, your heroes. And, and I use that term loosely, you know. Um, I don't know how you value that word. If they're alive, celebrate them, man. Pick a day out of the year. Go give them a gift card to their favorite restaurant. Tell them thank you. It's very, very important. You know, a phone call once a month. You don't have to give financial, you know. Um, but honor them while they're alive. As people say, you know, since the Nipsey Hustle death, give them their flowers while they're alive. You know, I think it's it, 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 it's essential. Um, are we all perfect at it? Nah. Do we fall short? Yes. Do life get in the way? Hell yeah. I'm just like y'all. I'm human. You know, and uh, but at the end of the day, I think that uh, uh, the more flowers we give, the more harvest we add to our own personal garden. So, uh, you know, I mean, I think it's very, very important. I wish and pray. I man. I would give days on my life to have a conversation w with Malcolm X. Oh man, in a heartbeat, in in a heart, in a heart. It's only two grave sites I've ever visited: my grandfather's and Malcolm X. I've never visit. I go to New York five, at least five times a year. You guys know. I've never visited my father's grave site. I didn't go to his funeral. Um, you know, um, so. With that being said, I've only gone out of my way to visit two websites, two grave sites, websites, <laughs> grave sites, you know, and that's my grandfather in Virginia. He's buried in Virginia. He's buried in Portsmouth, Virginia, and uh, uh, Malcolm X, you know, so um, those were the two pillars in my life. Obviously, my grandfather throughout my life and Malcolm X when I became an adult. I know who Malcolm X was because in Harlem, you have no, like I said, in Harlem, you have no choice but to acknowledge uh, Malcolm X, you know what I mean? Lenox Avenue with Malcolm X Boulevard now, you know, so, and I lived off, I lived in Espinar Gardens, which is on Lenox Avenue, basically, you know, so, um, but as I got older, you know, and, and your independence level is high, raised, meaning that I'm not getting formal educated, you know, I say around about 22, 23, I started, I started delving into Malcolm X little by little, you know, you, you, 
Uh, you see those T-shirts when I was a kid by any means necessary. And you get curious. You know, who is this guy with this hand on it, with this finger on this on the side of his on the side of his temple? Who is this guy with the glasses? You know, from the Nation of Islam that they say was murdered, you know, assassinated, you know, then Malcolm X. I mean, then Spike Lee did the movie, you know, and that definitely heightened, heightened me, you know, what I mean, and uh, heightened my curiosity. And, and it took on a life of his own. And if you and if you know anything about how I fight, they're definitely not on Malcolm X level. I'm, I'll, I'll be a damn fool, you know, what I mean, <laughs> to even compare myself to that. But in terms of standing for what I believe in, you know, <clears throat> having core principles. Many people on earth go through life without having core principles. They just live life. You got to have core principles. You got to have what do you stand for? What will you take and what will you not tolerate? You got to have this perimeter. In my humble opinion, I could be wrong, but there's a you got to have principles in life. You know, you can't just go around getting hired and fired everywhere from friendships to jobs to just taking what life gives you. You got to stand up and go get life, you know. And um, so I was so I would you would consider me a late bloomer because I was formally educated, you know, meaning I went to high school, went to college. I did some postgraduate work, you know, and so uh, so I was, I'm a late bloomer as it relates to Malcolm X, but I try to accelerate my knowledge through books, through YouTube, asking questions. You know, the Nation of Islam is very prevalent here. I live in, in this district, the Crenshaw district. They're on every major corner in the Crenshaw district selling bean pies, you know what I mean? And so I ask questions, you know. I, I make it a point to go to the mosque at least once a year, maybe twice a year, just to sit in, you know. Um, I, I think it's important um, just to pay homage to that energy. You know, so but anyways, man, uh, I just I, I just thought it was very unique and, and nothing happens by accident, man. Universe and God don't make mistakes. It's just I'm not comparing the Charlos to Malcolm X. No, not by any stretch of the imagination. But it just it just was interesting and compelling to me that they were born on this day, you know, and, and I'm out celebrating this day. And I I attempt, you know, yeah, anyways, man. Uh, it's Malcolm X's birthday, y'all. You know, it's the Charlo brothers' birthday. You know, it's Kevin Garnett's birthday today. You know, and uh, at the end of the day, honor, find whoever you honor, honor, tell them thank you, call them, write them, go to their gravesite. You know, I think it's important because remember, everything you do in life is for you. Yes, we're going to give, we're going to love each other, but you have spiritual edification that you must have. You have financial edification that you must have, physical edification, you know what I mean? So with all these being intertwined, you have to feed yourself, you know, and, and, and we're going to give, but we have to grow. And every time you give to someone else, you're growing. I believe that, you know, so but anyways, man, I love y'all, man. Happy Malcolm X Day. It's Malcolm X's birthday. I consider him the greatest black man of the 20th century. You know, he's the greatest black man I've ever read about. Uh, I've read about a lot of... I, I, I genuinely believe, honestly, if he had to live and Fred Hampton had to live, they killed Fred Hampton at 21 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Man. I'm not going to cry. I promise you I won't cry in this video. But if Malcolm X would have made it to the 90s, let's just give him to the 90s. You know what I mean? Early 2000s. You know, he would have been like 90, 1920, you know, like 94 today. He would have been 1919, 1920. He was born 1925, right? Uh Let's just give him to the early, the late 90s, early 2000s, right? Just to be on the safe side. And Fred Hampton coming up right behind him. Take the time, sometime this month. We got about a couple more weeks left in this month. If you guys get a chance, chance to, listen to a Fred Hampton speech. And listen to how cool 
his delivery was. Listen to how contemporary his voice was. Listen, and if you listen to him speak, you easily can place him in this hip hop culture. Easily, easily, easily. You know, man, those two men, man, those two men, more so than Martin Luther King, you know, more so for me than Marcus Garvey. You know, Marcus Garvey, I, I have my pros and cons about Marcus Gar Garvey. You understand what I'm saying? That's not a conversation to be had in this video. We celebrate excellence today. Um, but, uh, oh, man, Fred Hampton, man. Oh, man. God damn. Mm, mm, mm. So the question is, Can you drive home their spirit through, to your community? You know what I mean? Because it, it, if you live in the spirit of a Malcolm X or a Fred Hampton, sheesh, you a hell of a man. I'm, I'm talking to my men right now. You a hell of a man if you can drive home that spirit of Malcolm X and Fred Hampton through you to your community. You a hell of a man, dude. You a hell of a man. Hell of a hell of a hell of a man. So... Anyways, man, I love y'all, man. The Charlos, man, good luck in June. You guys got a very important June. Good luck to their op opponents as well. I don't want to make this, you know, we got four different, man. He's fighting Brandon Adams, who I think is uh, has ha has a hell of a level of determination. It's going to be an interesting fight, you know. Um, and Charlo and Harrison, it's nothing, it's nothing that I can say that Harrison hasn't said to promote that fight. So, but uh the Charlos were born on the on the same day as Malcolm X, you know, and and y'all know if you've been fucked with me from the first day of this channel, I've been very vocal about my mission statement. And my mission statement is in the spirit of Malcolm X. My mission statement is in the spirit of my son Lincoln. You know, like I uh I say all the time to myself. I say all the time to myself, if I can, if I can be as vulnerable as I am, as a man that I am as a father and, and give him the teachings of Malcolm X, you know, he's a biracial kid. So, so, so I think it's very, very important as me being the black parent that I drive home the culture in him. Do you understand? Dre does a fabulous job at, uh, at, uh, um, um, the Asian culture do a fabulous job. You know, you see his Asian, he plays with his Asian cousins three times a week, you know? And I think that, uh, it's very, very important that, uh, as a black man in this society that we drive home principles in our kids is it's, uh, and I think that our principles, I'm going to do a video and I'm glad this, this inspired this video. I, I genuinely believe, listen to what I'm saying. It cannot be American principles. It can't be. Being courteous, being respectful, those are human rights. Those are human principles. But I'm talking about the white picket fence, going to school. Our, uh, many of us as parents get our kids out the womb, start shaping them for them standardized tests. Start shaping them for their SATs. Fuck the SATs, man. I'm to teach these motherfuckers to be men. You know, and 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 that's kind of what I uh, aspire to do with the Lincoln. I know. I really see because Kennedy, my daughter, follows Lincoln, emulates Lincoln, everything that he does, everything that he does in the house. He picks up something, she pick up something. He starts making a train track. She starts making a train track. He comes and gives me a hug. Kennedy comes, grabs my leg. That's not by accident that the that the uh, female um, instinctively follows the male. You know, it, it may be a little bit skewed because in the combination of that, she's the youngest child, and the youngest child always wants to model the older brother, the older sister. So it, it's a combination of of of. Uh, 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 of biology and it's a combination of just reality that the younger child always looks up literally and figuratively and spiritually looks up to the older child so i've said enough i, I need to start talking about dominic brazil and uh deontay wilder fight but uh 
Charles, man, you got the same. I, uh, I, this video will probably get to y'all, but I'm gonna, uh, I'll see you guys and I'll see you guys in late June, man. Uh, and good luck. Have a great training camp. Um, may the best man win. You know, I, mean, I really don't have a horse in that Harrison. For real, I don't have a horse at all. You know, I, I just want to see it. it. It's like it, it, you know, man, best man win. You know, I love and respect what Harrison is doing for his community. Um, the Charlos opening up a gym. You know how powerful that is for a community. They're not going to get a lot of credit for that because they're boxers and they're supposed to open up gyms. But they have a state-of-the-art gym. I've never seen it physically. I've only seen it through their Instagram stories. And it looks like a high-tech, high-quality, high-grade gym, you know, and they have, and it's in a community, it is, and it serves the community. You know, I, I, they have a lot of kids in there, you know, so, and, and, they, and, they, and they're supposed to live their best life. I, don't, I hate when people say you're not supposed to do what you want with, with your money. If it's a declining asset, you have to answer that bell. But if you have assets to go with that declining asset, it's okay. You understand? So don't buy a declining asset without an ascending asset. You know, let your assets pay for your lifestyle. I don't know if they're doing it, but they have a gym. You know, they have they own houses. You know, Jamal Charlo was James Harden's neighbor. You know, uh, I was at the fight with uh, James Harden's manager, basically, you know, uh, last night. I don't want to say his name, but 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 yeah, we, we hung out at the uh, at Barclay Center. Uh, we talked for a hot second, and uh, I, I always see them in the summertime. But uh, but yeah, man, I'm getting off subject. But anyways, man, happy birthday to the Charlos. Happy birthday to the Honorable Michael Max, man, the greatest black man, the greatest man in the 20th century, man, the greatest, the greatest, the greatest to me. The great, and, and you want to know? I know he's the greatest. Never did any drugs once he became Malcolm X. Um, was loyal to both civil rights and was loyal to Betty. And the reason how I know this, because the FBI followed him every day. If, if he had a, done anything off principle, we would know about it. Like, it it's, it's well documented that more... Martin Luther King cheated on his wife and smoked cigarettes. I, I listen. I don't judge a man on that. So don't ju don't think that I'm coming down. I don't judge a man because he he cheats on his wife or he smokes a cigarette. I, I don't judge a man on that at all. I'm, I'm talking about Michael Max in terms of 20th century, and and why I believe that he is high grade, the highest grade. You know what I mean? And I wish that every black man. Every black, I don't care if you're if you half, you're a quarter, you're 10%. I think it's very, very important as a black man. You, you don't have to go in deep, you know, but you understand the principles of Malcolm X. It's, it's just what I believe. It's just what I believe. So anyways, man, Barbershop Conversations, man. Feel free to hit the subscribe button. Happy birthday to the Charlos. Happy birthday, Kevin Garnett. And happy birthday to my main man, my main man, Michael Max, man. Love you, man. Barbershop Conversations, I'm gone. Peace.